and our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Janet. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm very grateful for all the blessings and healings my family and I have received over the years through the study of Christian science. I'm also grateful for this service this evening. I'm so grateful for the readings on obedience. Thank you so much, Fairly. I'm grateful for the music and the testimonies that we will be hearing this evening. Last week, I was having some difficulty sleeping and began to suffer from indigestion. I got up and went to my iPad and turned to the PlainfieldCS.com website. That led me to a, a former lesson um, from this church on man, which was dated March 4th, 2018. And I'd like to share the following with you. It's um, one of, from Science and Health on page 165, where um, Mrs. Eddy states, you say that indigestion, fatigue, sleeplessness cause distressed stomachs and aching heads. Then you consult your brain in order to remember what hurt you when your remedy lies in forgetting, forgetting the whole thing. For matter has no sensation of its own, and the human mind is all that can produce pain. As a man thinketh, so is he. Mind is all that feels, acts, or impedes action. I returned to bed and slept restfully the remainder of the night. All I had to do was read that paragraph. And as I was reading it, the indigestion left me immediately. I'm so grateful for the Plainfield website and for all of the activities that are provided here. I'm grateful for the dedication of our faithful, loving practitioners who are always ready to help us. I'm also grateful to a mother who had the foresight to raise my sister Nancy and I in Christian science. I can't live without it, and I wouldn't even try. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Jeremy. It is always amazing to me when I think of all I've learned in Plainfield. What a blessing it is that God brought me here. Last week I gave a testimony about how I was finally able to give a needed rebuke to my kids. This week I have a few follow-up points that I'd like to give gratitude for. The first is, the very morning after I was able to give that rebuke, my practitioner told me to be sure to keep in touch with them. I'm so grateful she added that because a thought that was coming to me that day was, in effect, I'll just let them do their thing for a while and I'll connect in a month. It was obvious to me that since the practitioner told me to keep in touch, she knew I either had the thought or at least the possibility to be tempted by it. That really helped me to see clearly it was a wrong thought, and with that certainty, I was happy to put it behind me. The second follow-up point is that my daughter has since been hired at a job that really seemed like a good fit. My practitioner told me just this morning that since I was finally willing to do what I needed to do, the entire situation has begun to clear up so that progress can occur for all of us. Because of this and the tireless work of my practitioner, the job came within a week of when I last saw my daughter. What a beautiful and needed working out. I am so grateful to my practitioner for taking every opportunity to teach me more about Christian science and how to properly live it. It is such a blessing to be a member of this church. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy. Nancy from New Jersey, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the beautiful, beautiful service this evening, the heavenly music, and the absolutely wonderful readings tonight. I wanted to express my gratitude for all that were being taught here at the Plainfield Church. Every service, roundtable, testimony meeting, and Bible study are chocked full of truth and instructions for us to take in and make them a part of our daily life. I'm so grateful for the support of my practitioner and the instruction to watch 
and to pray whenever we see or hear something disturbing, whether it be on the news or in our daily, daily experience, and to always remember to acknowledge God in all things. Late Sunday afternoon, my youngest daughter had received a text from her mother-in-law informing her that a close family friend was reported missing since Saturday in the Smoky Mountains. He has dementia, and he wandered away while on vacation with his wife. As we are taught here to deny every error and replace it with the truth, I held to the fact that not one of God's children can ever be lost or separated from God, that God is all-knowing and all-seeing and speaking to all of his children. Each day I kept knowing that God was guiding the search and rescue team and that God was also guiding and guarding their friend. As the days passed and he still was not found, I held to these truths with confidence. I received a call this evening that he has been found and is alert and responsive. I was overwhelmed with gratitude to God, for I know this rescue was all God's doing. I was grateful to be able to add my prayers to the many other people that were praying and was so grateful for the opportunity to acknowledge the all power and presence of God to whom all things are possible. I am so very grateful for everything that this church offers, and I am very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Joanne. Joanne from Florida, go ahead. Those readings were wonderful tonight, Fairly. Thank you so much. Um, ever since I was a teenager, I suffered from abnormal and irregular menstrual cycles. They would come only four or five times a year, and when they did, the hemorrhaging was so severe that I often had to stay in bed for the day. Five different doctors told me they could do nothing to heal it, and that I would have to live with this condition for the rest of my life. When I came to Plainfield Church and started working with a practitioner here, I tentatively asked her, do you think Christian science can heal this? She answered with such sureness and love, of course it can. Then she gave me a verse from Psalm 45. The king's daughter is all glorious within and said that I am the king's daughter, God's loved daughter, and he made me all glorious and perfect within. That statement of truth went deep into my being. No one had ever said anything that beautiful to me before, and it healed me right then and there. From that day on, my menstrual cycle was normal and regular, like clockwork. I am so grateful to Christian Science and to the practitioner for this wonderful and permanent healing. But more so, I am grateful to have learned and continue to learn how much God loves me and how much good he has for all of us. I thank God for membership in this healing church for the help I'm, I am receiving from the practitioner here, and for Mrs. Eddy for discovering this blessed Christian science. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy. Wendy from Georgia, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for the readings tonight, Fairly, um, as well as all the inspiring testimonies. I would just like to share a recent demonstration of God's ever-present loving care and protection in my life and the others around me. Back in May, my entire department was called in on a Friday afternoon at 4 p.m., and we were told that all eight of our positions were being eliminated due to budget constraints. While some of my coworkers took it very hard, I turned my focus instantly to knowing that no man can take away our place and that God has a place and purpose for each and every one of his children. 
I decided to call my practitioner in this church and ask for her support. She directed me to the article on the Plainfield website called Place by Mary Baker Eddy, which was extremely helpful. I read it daily to keep my thought pure about the situation, knowing from what Mrs. Eddy says that the place I seek is seeking me and the place I need needs me. This was true for my coworkers as well. I held them all in my thoughts and prayers too, knowing the truth for each of us and trying my best to hold steadfast to that truth every day, especially when any fear of lack of supply or concern about my future income would try to creep into my thinking. The article on the Plainfield website called Opportunity by Bicknell Young also helped me to know that God is the source of all opportunity. I'm happy to say that last Wednesday I interviewed for an exciting new job at an elementary school only a mile from my house. This school is next to Hunter Army Airfield, our military base here in Savannah, Georgia. Half of all the students who attend there have parents who serve in the military. These families sacrifice so much for our country, and I would be so grateful to have the opportunity to be in a job where I could, in turn, serve them. I received a call from the school principal last Friday offering me the job, which was actually the official last day of my contract in my previous position. I was asked to start my new job this past Monday, so since both jobs were within the same school system, there was no lapse in employment or benefits, not even for a single day. In addition, I found out that all my coworkers have landed other positions within our school system, too. This is a wonderful demonstration of God's loving care and protection for those who trust in Him, no matter what obstacles we may face in our lives. Thank you also to my practitioner. Have a good evening. Thank you. Luba. Luba from Ohio. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> a lengthy home renovation this summer has brought me closer to, the tr to, to trust the allness of God and to depend on God's direction only. A sense of feeling overwhelmed at times has had to be overcome with the truth I am learning at Plainfield and through my loving, patient practitioner for whom I am forever grateful. I am also better understanding the true meaning of spiritual home. Thank you for tonight's reading and music, and I'm very grateful to be here this evening. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening, and yes, thank you for the wonderful readings and our beautiful music. My gratitude tonight is learning to live under God's love and government, under His dominion. There have been many and much wonderful teachings here at Plainfield about how to handle the weather. And I'd like to share something from Gilbert Carpenter in chapter 62 in Footsteps, because it, it really means a lot to me. Quote, in selecting the weather as the training ground for man's thought to reinstate itself into its position of dominion, Mrs. Eddy showed very great wisdom because man must necessarily know in such a task that without divine power and wisdom, he could not possibly control the storms and tempests." Unquote. And it's all God. And we had a, a storm last week and we were protected. Our practitioner was helping us, all of us, to go home safely. And um, while we were driving in the car, we could see lightning and there was rain and we were never afraid. And then suddenly everything cleared. It was so, it, and we said to each other, this is, it's crystal clear. It was almost like daylight. It was very beautiful and we were very grateful. Now, today, coming to church, we hit another storm. And there was torrential rain. We had put the flashers on. And 
we did text our practitioner and got immediate response and help. And we did pull over and noticed uh, as we left the first time after we pulled over, we noticed there were like 20 cars also pulled over. Most people were very wise and very careful. And then um, we got a text with a hymn about, uh, it's hymn 289. I just want to read a tiny bit of it because it was after we read this hymn that was given to us, everything stopped and the sky cleared. There was beautiful clouds on our right. I took a picture of them. And uh, it says, press on, dear traveler, press thou on. I am the way, the truth, the life. It is the straight and narrow way that leads to that eternal day. And there's more, it's a beautiful hymn. We both filled up with tears a little bit because it was so beautiful. And then everything cleared once again. And I guess I like to say that, you know, the challenges may come and keep coming, but we are always safe with God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike from New York, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for the beautiful readings, the testimonies, the music, and uh, the whole service as always. In working to enhance my expression of divine love, I recently realized that the Bible verse from 1 John 4.18, which states, quote, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Also says, uh, unquote, also says, quote, because fear has torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love, unquote. Possibly due to being immigrants and seemingly not fitting into society, I was a very fearful child, afraid of my shadow, and also afraid the days if there was no shadow. I thought I had overcome all that baseless fear, and recently I felt the urge to do more. While working with a verse from 1 John was helpful, I've been looking to find a fresh approach. I'm grateful to say that came in the round table from the week before last, in a verse from 2 Timothy 1.7, quote, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind, unquote. The idea that God didn't give us fear stated so perfectly, and the power of divine love and mind, which he does give us, has been very helpful in my endeavor to obliterate any chance of having fear. I'm very grateful for all that this Plainfield Church and its loving members offer to help correct and align our thinking with our Supreme Mother, Father, God. Anytime a need arises, there seems to be the necessary pearl of great price shared at our church, coming from God and Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy. And I am very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Carol. A couple of weeks ago, I was working in my garden and um, I developed poison ivy. Um, it was quite a bit of it. and. Uh, I prayed for myself, and some of it disappeared, but there was still, it was still on me. So um, the next morning, I called a practitioner in this church and asked for help. And the practitioner reminded me that God never made anything that could harm his child, that everything God made is perfect and beautiful and can only bless. And she said she would support me. And... Uh, by that afternoon, every bit of it was gone. There wasn't a trace left of it. I am just so grateful for the power of God and the power of Christian science, and very grateful for the practitioner's help. Thank you very much for the readings. Thank you. Linda. Uh, tonight I'd like to express my gratitude for our weekly Bible lessons. Um, and also the instruction from my practitioner here that taught me to take a citation each week on a, a paper 
and uh, take it with me and use it during the day. It's been indispensable to do that. So, um, so the other day, outside my house, there was this big commotion. So I looked out and there, was some ch there were some children with their mother and they had a leash and they were looking around. The little girl looked distressed and I recognized them as our neighbor who had a very active dog. And uh, the first thought was an impulse I had to go out there and help, especially the little girl. But I knew that I was going to be a distraction for work and I needed to be in for work and I listened. I really was trying to learn to listen to what God wanted me to do. And I got the thought to just stay and be still. And I knew that prayer was powerful, and that was the best thing I could do for them. And uh, immediately, that it was right following this week of a Sunday lesson on June 16th. And in there, there was a quote from Science and Health where Mrs. Eddy states, quote, God is the life or intelligence which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well of, as of men, end quote. And that's page 550. And at the round table, uh, it was also shared from Psalm 36, quote, O Lord, thou preservest man and beast, end quote. And those came to thought right away. And I was so grateful to have them. And I knew that this dog, my, uh, God who created him, had put him in his right place and he would be in his right place. Uh, and despite the scene of uh, this, this huge neighborhood with lots of wood, that they're, this is going to be solved. And so then I went right peacefully back to work, and about 30 minutes later, outside, I heard another commotion again. This time, there was a woman walking her dog, the family, a police officer, and a neighbor in the car, and they were all kind of spread out. And in the midst of it was a very um, race, uh, racing around active dog, <laughs> and he was just keeping himself just out of everybody's reach, and he was very fast. And again, I got this feeling to be pulled into the situation, but I, kn I knew that wasn't right. And I uh, turned away from it because it seemed like he was being extremely disobedient. And, it, and no matter what they did and tried to entice him, they could not catch him. And it was not safe for him to be running around. So I affirmed very firmly in my thought that this dog was obedient to the mind that created him. And I even said, you are obedient. And it was in less than a minute, I saw the lady she, that was walking her dog just get down and just pin him. Just, it was a miracle. Uh, that it, and it was beautiful. The officer got the leash right on and he got in a car and it was all taken care of. I was very grateful for all of the protection for each of those people and that dog in a very busy street and just the way it was kind of corralled. And I was grateful that in our huge neighborhood that it came back and was solved. Uh, where I could see and pray for what was needed at the time. And uh, I was also just recently saw the other day that he was getting some professional training, which was a very responsible thing to be doing. Uh, but most grateful is the, really the lesson of not feeling this need to rush around and jump into things and being still and also uh, practically using our citations that we have in these beautiful lessons. And I'm uh, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Florence. Florence from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I have two emails that I want to share. Um, this is, first one is from Chicago, and a gentleman who found our website a year ago and now is really using it. He writes, first of all, thank you. I have been working with what you sent me, the article placed by Mary Baker Eddy on your website, and from the Divinity Course and General Collectania, the Blue Book, sections about our work on page 80 and God's plan for his children on page 74. I have also been working with the Plainfield Christian Science Weekly Bible Lesson for the first time and with the articles about how to handle the wrong thoughts to know and understand that they are all lies I do not have to take in. I read the article by Edward Kimball called Quenching the Fiery Darts of the Wicked and realized that I must be awake to daily reject every wrong thought that comes. Here is what has happened in just a few weeks. A person 
that I worked with over 10 years ago called me about her job and wants me to come in tomorrow. Yesterday, I was selected for a paid focus group. Plus, an employment agency called me to report to work. And he's gainfully employed right now. He says, I'm also working with this warning that says, Christian scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you either when asleep or when awake by Mary Baker Eddy on your website, and it's from Science and Health, page 442. Thank you for putting me on the right track. And then the second one is from Virginia, and he says, I have had the first level of my house rented out routinely for a long time. Finding a new tenant has always been a challenge. Since finding Plainfield last year and working with a practitioner regularly, I have come to trust in God and lean not on my own understanding. This month, the apartment had been listed for rent only one week, and three potential renters came all praising the looks and all wanted to rent it. I decided on one girl who I liked and offered her the lease, still waiting, awaiting her references. When her reference came in, it had something about cleanliness, which made me hesitate to honor the lease, since cleanliness had always been an issue with some renters. It came to me to add a clause in the lease about cleanliness and the responsibility of hiring a cleaning service if they did not clean up. I realized this was a result of my work with practitioner and consistent study of science and how it was changing my view of myself as cared for by God and not a victim of circumstances as I used to accept as my life. The first potential renter didn't answer my request to meet and sign the lease. Meanwhile, another applicant sound reference came in, and I felt led to rent the apartment to him, and he immediately accepted. I knew if I was making a mistake, God would redirect, and I let go of the outcome. The girl emailed late the following day, saying she had reflected and decided not to take the rental as she was now moving to California. This was proof to me that listening to God, I was truly taken care of, even before I knew the truth of the situation. I was blessed by turning it over to God. I have kept the clause in my lease and have such a sense of protection and care from God's love. I am so grateful for letting go of so much human mental manipulation That used to be my life and allowing God to manage things. I'm so grateful for the steadfast guidance and support of my practitioner and Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church. Thank you, Feli, for the beautiful readings tonight. I just want to say that obedience, as I've learned to follow what God Says and what, how he directs my life has changed my life. So grateful for the testimony so far, and I'm truly happy to be here with overflowing gratitude for Christian science, what it means when we follow and obey as directed. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. I have several testimonies to read tonight. I'll first read uh, something from our website bulletin board from Florida. Thank you for that most holy singing of the solo Rock of Ages. When it ended, my husband and I looked at each other and said in unison, that was beautiful. Words are inadequate for how blessed it made us feel. Thank you, soloists and chorus, and to all for that inspiring service on truth. 
We're grateful to have a church service like this to come to. This is a testimony from England. I would like to express gratitude for a recent experience in the record-breaking high temperatures we have been having here in the UK. I was finding a difficulty in breathing. Then a couple of days ago during the afternoon, this suddenly became much more challenging and seemed to be caught be because of congestion. By bedtime, I was struggling and felt rather fearful of laying down to sleep. However, I've been reading Arthur Curry's Corey's Christian Science class instruction and had found this helpful quote in chapter eight. My mission is to express God and the acknowledgement of this disposes of any obscuration or obstruction in the way of belief, belief or misinterpretation. I had been thinking about this during the day and continued to claim this as I got into bed. I was surprised how easily I managed to get to sleep and felt much better the next morning. For this I am extremely grateful, as in the past I have had similar experiences which were, have been very frightening and kept me awake for most of several nights. And then this from California. I am very grateful for an experience I had recently just before a Wednesday service that taught me a lesson on animal magnetism how it operates, and how to handle it. Last Wednesday night, about 45 minutes before the service was about to begin, I noticed water dripping down onto our patio from the upstairs. Having just moved into this house and not having to use the AC until just recently, we had no idea what this could be other than it might be draining from, the, from using the air conditioner. I called our heating and air conditioning company to see if someone would come out, but was pretty sure it was almost five and that probably wasn't going to happen. I suddenly realized what was really going on, and it had nothing to do with dripping water. I did make an appointment for the next day, but I realized that this was nothing but what we call animal magnetism trying to keep me and my fiancé from listening to the service and knew that whatever was going on had to stop. I also use the statement from Mrs. Eddy's daily treatment where she says, This is God's spiritual household. Nothing can enter to annoy or destroy, to manifest sickness or discouragement. For God fills this household with perfect love and peace and governs every member in it. I quickly felt felt at peace about the situation and knew that I was not going to be distracted during the service for a minute, worrying about what was happening. I turned it over to God and knew this hour was about gratitude, and I could be grateful already for God's care of the situation. The meeting was so wonderful and inspiring. I knew I could have listened to the service as a recording if something were to happen, but as Mrs. Eddy has taught us, one, see what animal magnetism is trying to do. Two, know that it can't do it. Three, see that it is not done. After the service, I looked out onto the patio and there was no dripping water and all the water had dried up. We have to be careful as Christian scientists that we don't allow the thought, well, it probably would have stopped anyway. We are immediately separating ourselves from God if we allow that kind of thinking. Mrs. Eddy says in her treatment day, I tell you the truth when I say there is only one source of all good, God. I am so grateful for this lesson and to be learning that the terms such as animal magnetism, mental malpractice, aggressive mental suggestion are not to be feared as I once thought or ignored. They were wisely used by Mrs. Eddy to illustrate the nature of any situation as attempts of the so-called mind, which is, supposed, which is the supposed absence of the one mind, trying to separate us from God. I am so grateful for the support of my practitioner from this church, for the wonderful website that offers so many powerful and instructive writings, the recordings of books and articles, Bible studies, roundtable, not to mention the services that are broadcast around the world. 
I'm grateful for Christ Jesus, Mrs. Eddy, for her sacrifice to give us this truth, and for this church, which teaches us so clearly that this science is to be lived every moment of every day to bless all mankind with much gratitude. And then another testimony from California. I give thanks to God because I am seeing that there's nothing too big or too small that he can't help us with. I'm so appreciative of the Wednesday meetings and all the amazing testimonies. I learn so much from each and every one. This is such a beautiful treat. Last week, my 22-year-old daughter came home and shared with me that she had lost her favorite hydro flask bottle. I asked her if she wanted to find it or get a new one, and she stayed quiet. I then explained that once she decided she could bring this to God, and then I shared a testimony of someone who found her phone a few weeks ago and a testimony of someone else who had found her keys praying to God for the answer. My daughter was carefully listening. Two days after she came home so excited because she had found her hydro flask bottle and she said, Mom, that really worked and I already thank God for his help. Sent with love. And this is a letter from a new person in Montana. Hello friends. This letter to you is one of immense gratitude for which I have enclosed a donation check. Your generous offerings online at your website and on YouTube are godsends. Literally, I have been edified by the wisdom conveyed, or perhaps I should say edified. <laughs> In the late 70s or early 80s, I was a Christian scientist at the First Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. After two years, I sent a formal letter to the Mother Church opting out, not so much because of the teachings, but more to seek other things. Having been a seeker with no childhood religious training, I couldn't be stopped seeking. So perhaps the Church took me at my word and I'm no longer a member. Over time, I did not lose my belief in God's healing and I, I still have no medical insurance or even a doctor. It has truly been God's blessing, not my formal treatment according to Christian Science Ways. After being an evangel evangelical Christian and lastly a Catholic in search of the one true church, I'm thrilled to say I'm back to the metaphysical approach. I came back to the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy with new understanding. I believed then when I was a new member However, there is no desire on my part to be part of the organized church again. Even if there was, I live in a small rural, rural town about 90 miles from Christian Science. So I was so very thrilled to find your website and hear, hear the words spoken about Christian Science is like putting on a glove that fits perfectly. I have purchased another Science and Health with key to the scriptures, and in a real sense, it feels like coming home. Thank you, dear ones, for listening. I'm already subscribing to your YouTube channel and would love to be on your mailing list if you ever do mailings. My very best to you all, and thanks again. And this one is from someone new from the Netherlands. She says that um, She's ordered a Christian science, this Christian science textbook in Dutch, and she's asking, is it possible to become a member, even without a donation for now? And of course, yes, it is. And she sent in her membership application. And then she writes, I am happy I found this truth of life, and I wish to grow and live this life. So good to realize that God is the only good Thank God my eyes are opened. Thank you for the audio of Peter V. Ross. I feed myself like a spoon. I will go on and hopefully that more and more Dutch people find this life, truth, and love. So it's wonderful to hear from 
people from literally around the world are finding us, and I'm so grateful. And I thank, thank you, Fairly, tonight for the beautiful readings and obedience, such an important subject and one to truly take to heart. In the lesson this week, in Romans 8, it's the golden text, and the golden text reads in part, but Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This came to me when my life was quite in disarray. It seemed like everything was going wrong. And uh, I thought a lot about this verse and held to it, wondering if it was really true, if it was a promise from God. And I learned that, yes, it is a promise from God, and God's promises are kept. And I thought about the fact it was written by the Apostle Paul, and he was involved in shipwrecks and stoning, imprisonment, and yet he could say that he knew that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So he knew this, and he knew that there was a condition to it, the fact that we need to love God, our Father, Mother, God, and that we need to be called according to his purpose, which means to be living for him in the best way that we can. And when we do that, it doesn't matter how terrible things might seem. God is in the middle of it, working it out. And not just maybe where you are, but maybe there are others involved, but he's working the whole thing out. And it will work together for good. It never fails. And I can say this now because all of this horrible mess I was in did work out. It didn't work out overnight, but it did work out. And then I read this from Charles Spurgeon, who is the famous English preacher. He tells of a man who was arrested during the reign of, reign of Queen Mary for preaching the gospel. The prisoner was swiftly condemned to be burned at the stake. When he heard the sentence, he said, Never mind, all things work together for good. People asked, But how is this going to work for your good? He replied, I don't know how, but I know it will. Then on the way to London, the guards treated him so roughly that they cast him down and broke his leg. They mocked him, saying, Tell us, how is this going to work out for your good? Again, the prisoner said calmly, I do not know, but I know that God will use it to bring good. The man's leg was splinted so that he, continued, so that he could continue the trip. Because of the accident, the party arrived in London one day later than planned. And as it happened, one day after Mary, Queen Mary had died, and Queen Elizabeth was now on the throne, and she was the one who pardoned this man. So we all know examples of this, how things do work out. If we trust him, keep walking, keep doing the best we can, all things will work out if you trust the Father and if you are living the best life you know how. I am so grateful for this wonderful lesson taught to us in Christian science. Mrs. Eddy has said, even if you were to fall and break your leg, get up and know that this can only do you good. It can only be a blessing. And in that way, you become a law to yourself and you do experience a great blessing because God is a God of love. I'm so grateful to be here tonight to have heard the beautiful music, readings, and testimonies. And thank you to everyone. Thank you.